Hello, hello there. I'm, of course, Sean Doe, right here in Tokyo, Japan. And we're going to do another edition of the Ghost Series Report. Now, today is the big day. Seventy years have passed now since an atomic bomb was actually dropped and detonated in an act of war. I'm, of course, referring to the August 6th nuclear detonation of a bomb in Hiroshima, here in Japan. Now, the current political climate is rather complex on this issue in Japan. You, know, you have Shinzo Abe, this fascist wannabe dictator, saying all the things he's, he's saying recently, doing all the things he's doing here in Japan. But let's focus on the actual act itself. You know, I posted on Facebook a simple um, reminder that today is the day. You know, because I'm a working guy, you know, and I got my troubles and stuff, so I just want to make it short and sweet. But then I saw all the comments about it, which are rather heated and rather lively. And I said, okay, well, I'll sit down, you know, make a video about it in this scorching heat here in Tokyo today and I hear some interesting things about the end of this war end of World War II, the end of Japanese imperialism as we as we knew it back then if you didn't know this the months leading up to the first atomic bomb dropped which is today like I said the 70th, 70th, 70th anniversary of it's quite interesting. The thing is, the imperial government in Japan did not want to surrender to the Americans or the Soviet Union. Because they knew by doing so would mean the complete and utter destruction and end of the Japanese Empire. So they made several attempts to propose a peace accord, not actual surrenders, to several nations, including some of the Allies. Now, all these nations were completely behind the Americans and the Soviets. They weren't going to listen to these cries for help from the Japanese Empire. But they did make these efforts and attempts. Now, how did I find out about this? Well, initially, it's quite interesting how I, I really found out about this, right? It's when I made a trip several years ago now to the National Museum in Tokyo. Ironically, it's right next to the Akatsuni Shrine. That's a whole other thing, but like, I went through the whole museum and I saw all these things that were being claimed and said, and it was quite shocking to me at first. So, you know, I went home and started researching all these claims, and it comes, it comes out to be very true, actually. The, the documents and letters, the Prime Minister at the time, and what the Emperor was dictated at the time, are very true. They were pleading and begging with a lot of different nations to sign a peace accord to end uh, what they call uh, aggressive action with several different nations, right? So what they were trying to do at that time was try to um, make peace with a couple of nations to try to form a new alliance against the Americans and the Soviets to say, you know, hey, these guys are, are with us. These guys, they don't want to war anymore. Why are you still trying to war with us? Now, why were they doing that? Like I said, they were trying to maintain the empire. They get a few countries to sign peace accords with them and say no more aggression and war. Then they could say, well, you know, these territories, the Americans are bombing and taking over illegal. These Soviet Soviets doing this are illegal, you know, internationally. They were trying to play politics. A time where politics in World War II was totally thrown out the window. It was a case of total war, you know. And the, the Japanese were playing a a game they were going to lose, and I don't really think they really understood at the time. They honestly, the, the imperial government honestly believed they could pull this off. It wasn't going to work because the navy had been completely destroyed. You know, the the, the major islands where they had a military outposts and were fighting were were being overrun. It's only a matter of time before the Soviets were going to make land on the main island here in Honshu. And the Americans were already gearing up. They were surrounded the country. They were ready to move in. 
But they were playing these political games with uh, in the world, right? So I think that's a lot that what led to this nuclear bomb being dropped. But that's not all. Because the America Americans were a rising empire. And Japan was a dying empire. And you also had the Soviet, this socialist revolutionary government going on that was doing amazing things in the world. We were also clearly going to emerge after World War II as a major player, right? This new economic system, this new economic idea, this new social idea was gaining ground due to what's going on during World War II. So the Americans had to, like, you know, prove a damn point, right? This effectively defeated nation that had no interest in the surrendering. Japan, what I'm speaking of, they had no interest in surrendering. They didn't want to do that. They didn't outright surrender? No. Like I said, I've explained what was going on. You can look up all this, all this stuff I'm saying up. You can find it. It's out there. It's readily available. I don't have to give you links or references. You can find, your, find it on your own like I did. So what do the Americans do? They go, well, we have been working on this damn super weapon that the Nazis and the Soviets are both working on, but we're kind of ahead of them due to our spies and intelligence. We know we have it. We can use it before they can. So let's fucking use it on the Japanese. We're in position to do so. We got the power to do it. They can't stop us. Let's drop it. We're scared of living shit out of the out of the Soviet Union. They keep them keep them out of East Asia, which is kind of funny because China went red right underneath America's fucking knolls, you know. But let's keep the Soviets out because we fear them the most. They're the most threat to us, even though they're fighting the fascists same as we are. You know, they're fighting the, the Japanese imperialists same as we are. Let's drop his bomb. They did it, and the massive death and carnage that, that detonation did was unprecedented in war history. I'm sure when the news feeds came out and people, you know, in power at the time saw those pictures, talk about big eyes, like going, "Oh, God damn! What the what have the Americans done?" I'm sure that happened. But one bomb wasn't enough; they'd drop another one. The reason being, effectively, the emperor effectively told America, fuck you, you ain't got another one, we'll still fight. And Americans were like, oh really? Ha 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 ha, we got one more. They dropped another one on them. And at that point, you know, the emperor was like, wait a minute. You know, we don't want to surrender. We want to keep fighting, but our politics are not working. And... These Americans are going to completely destroy us if we don't give in. So the surrender actually happened. You know. And that's what I understand of things. That's my understanding of how this all went down. You know. And you know, it also proves, here's the thing, right? You can't figure it out by now. Nuclear warfare is disgusting. It's ugly. It's nasty. And it... It's... The time it's been used in history is for political gain. It was for power. Even in modern times, you know, like nuclear weapons are, are a power play. You can always say, like Americans do, all options are on the table. That's hinting that we will nuke your ass if you don't give us what we want. That's disgusting. To use such a weapon, in a way, as intimidation, you know. Ironically enough, to finish, video, finish this video up, right? There's a group of nations who have somehow are allowed to have nuclear weapons. It's America, UK, France, Russia, and China. Now, these nations are allowed to have nuclear weapons and use it as an intimidation against other nations constantly. This all options on the table thing. But any nation develops a nuclear weapon and says, hey man, we got one now, so fuck you, don't mess with us. You got to talk to us. The nations don't like that. They don't like it when uh, these other nations who are not allowed to have this ultimate power get it. And then suddenly these nations that are allowed want to talk and be friends. So that's something to leave this on this note. When we talk about this historic event that happened in society. And how nuclear weapons are used in this day and age. And what it means in modern times. So I want to hear your comments, comment, comment box below. Tell me what you think about this. You find this video to be very interesting? 
share it around. Share it with your friends. First time you see me, hey, please subscribe. You get lots of stuff like this and some surprises from time to time. Until next time, this is me, John Dole, here in Tokyo. Checking out.